It's a return to kindness and joy and respect and dignity. There's so many partners that are in stores who are just done being pushed around. They really want to be heard and they're making sure that they're making a lot of noise. Companies throughout the country being assaulted in many ways by the threat of unionization. I mean, it's obvious that like Starbucks hasn't listened through all these years. You know, I mean, it's not a new thing that came up that we wanted more labor, we wanted more pay. And now we have a group, an organization, trying to take our people. There are issues in the store that can be solved just by listening to your partners. So just listen. Let me tell you something. Starbucks' best days are ahead of us. Pay us what we're worth and give us the labor needed to execute your demands. Because honestly, without those two things, you're not going to have a company. We are wounded. We are overworked. We are underpaid. We need, we need you to just listen because this is the time. There is a big change coming in this company and you know, just support us and what we want. It's a company you started in the eighties and here we are 50 years later. Um, and we just, we want to do another 50 years, but the right way. And you know, we're counting on you to make the right decisions. Coming into Starbucks, my first year, it was the culture of creating a third place for people, a place where people want to feel welcomed and where they know that everyone will know your name, everyone will know your drink, and it's not just like coming in and getting grabbing a cup of coffee. The communication between higher-ups and our stores started to become non-existent. We noticed that stores that were being built were not as well put together as older stores. New stores still have lots of problems. Um, things break more easily now. Uh, we don't have the tools that we need to make our stores successful. They introduced so many new things like components to drinks, mobile orders, deliveries. We were never given the tools to make that happen properly. We were doing all this extra work and we weren't getting paid for what we, th we think that we were worth. When I first heard about the union campaign in Buffalo, my heart swelled. I was so proud of them. I knew that it was the right time to go and, you know, to go and get it. The fact that they're cutting uh, hours in stores nationwide, the fact that they are um, writing people up, they fired seven people in Tennessee, the Memphis Seven, um, it's disheartening and it's sad. It's a tactic that Starbucks has used before. Um, I feel like they're flexing their muscles this time, but it's not going to work. Yeah. We were so happy when they won. I said from the beginning, if this goes through, it's going to be like wildfire. And I was excited and I knew that it was going to catch. Um, watching his anti-union speech in Buffalo broke my heart. It, that's not the Howard Schultz that I grew up with in this company. Balancing profitability with our commitment to our people, that is rock solid. Rock solid. Never question it. And it was just disheartening to see him not listen to when we really needed him to. It was disappointing. And I was angry. It was, it, was, it, was, it was very hard to like hear that and watch that. It's a silly exercise. You know why? 
What is culture? It's so simple. It's you. And they saw that something had to change and they took it upon themselves to go for that change. And that's cur that's, that takes courage. So I'm proud of them. They're not gonna win this time. There's so much power behind our movement or Buffalo's movement that they're not gonna be able to do what they did before and it's not gonna work. The best thing they could do now is just listen and you know, give us a seat at the table and just really make this company or put this company back to where it used to be.